Thank you, Carolyn, for bringing us into worship this morning. And my friends, uh, good morning to you. Great to be with you and to be back with you. Thank you for some time with my family and time for rest and re vacationing. And uh, thanks to our three retired pastors, Gordon and Phil and Dave, for taking care of us while we were gone. For our elders who stepped in so wonderfully and bravely <laughs> as well. Uh, and uh, we, we joined you online and experienced worship firsthand virtually. So again, a, a, big, a big thank you and uh, always an acknowledgement to our audiovisual team, Howard and, and Jeff particularly, because that's a, a wonderful way for us to stay connected even when we're gone uh, is through virtual worship. So anyway, great to be home, glad to be back, and great to be with you this day. As the Easter season continues and the joy of our resurrected Lord continues to define our existence, come friends, let's rise and come together in worship. May he be glorified this day. As we gather in the name of our saving God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In fact, in the name of the Father, giver of life and all good gifts, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for our salvation, and of the Holy Spirit, giver of new life, who lives in us. So, in thanksgiving, we proclaim, amen. Thanks be to God, indeed. Well. That our worship may be pure in the Lord's sight. And that our thanksgivings to him be unhindered by our, our selfishness and sin. First, my brothers and sisters, let's come together. And in repentance, confess our sins to the Lord God, that we might be cleansed, forgiven, in the blood of Jesus. Merciful God, you have loved your creation from the beginning of time. You desire that we also love you and our neighbor with fullness of heart. But we confess that we often seek wealth or security for ourselves without acting generously toward others. We confess that all too many times we are less than thankful for the blessings you give us. We confess that we too often dwell on our brokenness rather than celebrating Jesus' victory. We confess that we are sinful and unclean and in need of your mercy and love. Renew our hearts in thankfulness toward you and the gifts you give to us each day. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this is a time for rejoicing and gladness and thanksgiving. For the Lord God Almighty has shown his mercy to us in his one and only Son, Jesus, your Savior. He is the Christ, the Anointed One, the Risen One, the Ascended and Reigning One. And in him, in the body of his church, and in this office, as your called and ordained servant of the word, hear this good news that we receive today. Your sins are forgiven you in the power of the Lord who loves us and has given himself for us and has chosen to live in your heart, claiming you as his own. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let God's people say amen, amen, amen. How about we shout to the north, to the Lord, in joyfulness and thanks. Let's join our hearts together and sing. Men of faith, rise up and sing. Through fire, we've been through rain. 
Lord of heaven and earth is among us, and we know that grace and peace that fills our hearts and lives. Let's share that with one another. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with you. Thank you, and share that joy with one another, won't you please, as you embrace each other in Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Sam. Peace be with you, buddy. Thanks. Doing good? Yeah, good. Say hi to Eric. Those of you online, as we share this time virtually with you, the Lord's peace and blessings be with you as well as we're one together in the body of Christ and celebrate his goodness, his grace, his bonds that he gives to us as brothers and sisters in Jesus. Amen. Well, as the Easter season continues, as the celebration of Jesus' resurrection continues, he prepares us for what's next, making us ready as God's people for what's next. The readings today help us understand the fullness of what that means, as then, too, we hear the gospel of our Lord. Come, friends, let's hear the word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Luke in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. When news spread throughout Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God, the Jews criticized Peter. Peter explained the vision given to him by the Lord God and the power of the Holy Spirit who fell on the Gentiles. The first reading, beginning at verse 1. Soon the news reached the apostles and other believers in Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God. But when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, the Jewish believers criticized him. You entered the home of Gentiles and even ate with them, they said. Then Peter told them exactly what had happened. I was in the town of Joppa, he said, and while I was praying, I went into a trance and saw a vision. Something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners from the sky, and it came right down to me. When I looked inside the sheet, I saw all sorts of tame and wild animals, reptiles and birds, and I heard a voice say, get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, I replied, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. But the voice from heaven spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. This happened three times before the sheet and all it contained was pulled back up to heaven. Just then, three men who had been sent from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were staying. The Holy Spirit told me to go with them and not to worry that they were Gentiles. These six brothers here accompanied me and we soon entered the home of the man who had sent for us. He told us how an angel had appeared to him in his home and had told him, send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He will tell you how you and everyone in your household can be saved. As I began to speak, Peter continued, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as he fell on us at the beginning. Then I thought of the Lord's words when he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And since God gave these Gentiles the same gift he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to stand in God's way? When the others heard this, they stopped objecting and began praising the Lord God. They said, we can see that the Lord God has also given the Gentiles the privilege of repenting of their sins and receiving internal ex eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ladies, won't you join together and sing with us? Oh, 
compared to our current earth. But the Lord God will one day wipe every tear from our eyes, banish sorrow and pain, and make everything new. The second reading, beginning at verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down from the Lord God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, the Lord God Almighty's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. The Lord God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes 
and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. He also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Indeed. I used that text yesterday for a wedding for Carly and Daniel, who were married, and uh, had a chance to share with them the work that God is making all things new, even for them and through them, as they live as children of God in their marriages, as that marriage, as we live as children of God in his kingdom, preparing to hear the gospel of our Lord. Come, friends, let's rise and prepare to hear his word. Let's sing together. These things are written. Alleluia. Gospel of John, chapter 16, starting at verse 12. Now, this is not a post-resurrection account of the gospel. In fact, Jesus hasn't gone to his cross or been raised from the dead yet. He's in the upper room with his disciples and preparing them for what is to come once he is resurrected. Jesus continued as he told his disciples, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine, and that is why I said, The Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. And Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And Because I'm going to the Father. They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. When Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice And no one will take away your joy. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ, indeed. Come, and let's confess the truth to which we've been called, summarized for us in the Apostles' Creed, as we declared, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, friends. Let's say thank you, shall we? Thank you, Gary and worship band, uh, worship team members. Thank you for your, your contribution today. Boy, doesn't it sound, doesn't it sound like today, that, that, that song, The Devil's per Perceived Thoughts? You know, last night you turn on the news and, what, 10, maybe 11 people killed in Buffalo? A war raging. COVID continues to be among us. I, I, wow. How do we 
prepare each day to live as kingdom people, to live as God's people, to live as sons and daughters of the risen king. Join me in John chapter 16 today. We're going to look at verses 21 to 22, parts of those verses, uh, that section at least. It's the gospel reading for us today. And may the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, our Heavenly Father, the blessing of the Spirit, empower us to, to be in this word, to hear it, mark it, inwardly digest it as God's people as we share these truths with us. So, to get ready for life every day, we, we hear the truth of the word of the Lord that marks us in who we are. Is there a routine for us? Are there some thoughts that mark are getting ready for the day. You probably have a routine at home, right? So that when you leave the house, whether it's for work or school or to run errands or whatever you're going to be doing, you, you, you have a routine. You know where your keys are so you don't have to spend a half hour searching for them, right? You know where your phone's plugged in so that it's all fully charged and ready to take with you, your wallet or purse, you know where that's at. If you have any things that you need to take with you on an errand, you've got them maybe sitting by the door, you're ready for the day. Right? And of course, then the unexpected happens. And all that you've been prepared for now goes out the door. Right? All right, that's life. We who are in Christ Jesus, we're prepared. Faith in Jesus prepares us for the day, it prepares us for an eternity. There's no doubt there in that being justified by grace through faith, we have life with Jesus Christ now and unto eternity. It's when the other things of life get in the way and seek to throw all of that uh, in, into, into confusion. You know, the disciples are gathered with Jesus in John 16. They're, they're celebrating the, the Passover. It's, it's this, this night we call Monday Thursday. It's the last Passover that Jesus will celebrate with them. He's cutting a new covenant uh, there with, with them in, in a new meal. We know it as Holy Communion. And, and the disciples hear these words of Jesus, which really throw their plans, how at least they think they're prepared to take the next day on as Jesus' disciples. But let's go there, all right? In verse 12, we hear, Jesus says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. Fellas, I want you to know you're ready for today because of what I've given you and spoken to you. And I can't give you any more because you couldn't handle all of that, what's more, that I want to tell you. But for right now, for today, you've got what you need. Okay. But it's not just that simple either for those disciples, for us, is it? Because it's not just today. We're also thinking and needing to prepare for the tomorrows. I was looking for a pair of shorts the other day to put on, to help Sam get dressed, put on him, help him put on. And I'm scouring around his room looking for his shorts. I'm opening every drawer. Can't find them, can't find them. Finally, I ask, I ask Sue, hey, have you seen Sam's shorts? Oh, yeah. They're packed away in a suitcase for a trip we're going to take in July. <laughs> He's preparing for tomorrow, or the tomorrows, right? He, he's, he's thinking ahead like that. And, and we find ourselves thinking about that too, but, but are we thinking about that necessarily in our, our spiritual life and connection in the kingdom? Well, Jesus, for these disciples, helps them get ready for what's to come. He says in verse 13, when he, and he's talking here about the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit of truth comes, He'll guide you into all the truth. He'll not speak on his own. He'll speak only what he hears, and he'll tell you what is yet to come. So not only am I preparing you for today in what you need to know, but I'm also preparing you for what's to come, the tomorrows, because the Holy Spirit is going to be leading, guiding, enlightening you. Now that assumes, doesn't it, that we continue to remain in the Spirit for us, what we understand that to mean is that we're in his word, right? That inspired, Holy Spirit-led word of God, that timeless truth to which we find the Spirit's leading there. That we continue in the fellowship of the body. I know that's a little, little challenging, maybe difficult and different for those of you who are, are, are virtual. But still, you're part of the body to be in the word and connected in the fellowship of his 
bride, the, the church, Jesus' bride. And so not only is, is there a preparation for what's to come, but then, but then Jesus sets us up for something else. You know, um, this last week we had our Southeastern District Convention, and one of the devotional times was spent with uh, Pastor Dale Meyer. You might remember him from the Lutheran Hour some years ago. He was also the president of uh, Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. And, and he shared some devotional thoughts with us that were really striking for me. Uh, maybe you heard them as well. In, in a nutshell, what he said was, you know, it, it's fine for us to go back to the manger where Jesus was born, celebrating Christmas. Good. It's fine for us to go to the cross Celebrate Jesus dying for us, justifying us because of his bloodshed. Good. It's fine for us to go to the empty tomb and to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. But those things are all past. We can't recreate those moments that have already been fulfilled in God's plan of salvation for us because it's done, it's completed. There is one thing that we are called to be ready for and to celebrate that celebrate and that is Jesus return <laughs> the one who has ascended on high and reigns there he's coming back again we sing right soon and very soon we're gonna see the king yeah and Jesus prepares us for his return he says in a little while you will see me no more and then after a little while, you will see me. Now, in the context of speaking to the disciples, he's speaking within their days of life. But for us, in the fullness of God's word, he's speaking to us as well. Where we will one day again see Jesus face to face. We long for his return. And we're ready for it. Oh, come, Lord Jesus, we pray. The disciples heard all of this, didn't they? They heard these words, and, and, and what does John say about it? They questioned. They wondered. What does Jesus mean when he says, in a little while? What's he talking about? This bothers us. We can't understand it. And I would imagine, as I join with them in hearing this, as you do too, maybe there's some, yeah, some questions that creep in, right? Ah, oh, that evil whisper of the devil and his temptations, making us want to question and wonder the truth. Am I really prepared? It's not dependent on my own works or goodness, but it's all been won and proclaimed for me in Jesus Christ that I belong to him. The waters of baptism secure me in those promises. Now I'm called to walk in him. Huh. But still I question, am I? Prepared? Or, or are there some other answers? Do I need to look elsewhere? Oh, boy, the world is filled with that temptation right now. Are there other ways that we can find the, the answers to our questions that don't seem to be answered the way I want them to be right now? And boy, we know where that leads us then, doesn't it? Outside of faith, outside of truth, outside of the kingdom. If it weren't for that manger, if it weren't for the cross, if it weren't for the empty tomb, we would be a people without hope. But we are a people who know where all of this is going. We are a people who have been prepared in the grace of our Savior Jesus to stand with him in glory one day. Because there, as God became man, there... As God suffered for us in our humanity, there, as God raised his own son from the dead, that prepares us for today and for our tomorrows and it prepares us to meet Jesus one day in the assurance that I've been forgiven, right? And I've been given a new life, right? And my place isn't here in this time, even though I'm living here right now. My place is in heaven, in eternity, my place is in the kingdom before my heavenly father. Right? Indeed. So Jesus prepares us as his people, as these disciples, speaking and saying, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again 
and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. What powerful words, what, what a powerful truth that is to help us get a, a grasp on today, right now, what's going on in the world among us, around us, to take us into the days that are ahead with confidence, joy, assurance, and to prepare us to meet Jesus face to face. Why do I say that? Because Jesus gives us some kingdom truths here that help us balance where we're living now with our life in the kingdom. How so? Well, he makes us ready for today in this simple statement. Now is your time of grief. <laughs> really? <laughs> is that what you want from me, Lord? Now look, friends, there's so much joy and gladness that we, we, we know in the kingdom. But Jesus wants us to know now and today you're going to have a lot of grief. Just prepare for that. Be ready for it. Acknowledge it. Not, don't let it surprise you. Ten people got killed in Buffalo. I grieve for that. But why should I be surprised when the prince of this world wants nothing more than to destroy God's creation, life? We grieve. We pray for the, those who are left behind. But we're prepared to face that. We're prepared to face these kinds of days because of the tools that we've been given. The tool of prayer, faith, right? The, prayer of God, uh, the, the tool of God's word, uh, the comfort of one another, the perspective that these kinds of things mark this day. As much as I don't like them and I hate them, I hate evil, I hate the devil. But right now, these days, we're going to have grief. That gives me, at least I find in my heart and my, my emotions, my, my thinking, to know that Jesus has already said, you're going to have grief today. That gives me a, a, a sense of balance in all of this, okay? I don't like it. I wish it were different. But we're going to have this, okay? And for the days ahead, for what's to come, these times that we don't know, Jesus says, and gives us a truth, he says, I'll see you again. And you will rejoice. Ah, what a truth to cling to. Jesus says, I will see you again. Now, he's speaking to his disciples, but we're those disciples today. And when I see you again, you will rejoice. I might not know the grief that's going to be facing me tomorrow. We don't know that. But I do know this. Now, when I see Jesus again, when we are, are with him face to face, there will be so much joy. Our hearts will abound in rejoicing. And in fact, doesn't the Spirit direct us in that these days? What does the Spirit say? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say, rejoice. Today, in the days to come, you're prepared. And you're prepared when I return. Because when I return, oh, no one's going to take away that joy. No more days of grief. No more questions. No more wondering. No more sorrow. No more death. No more crying. Just me. And you. In the presence of glory for an eternal joy. Nobody can take that away. That's a promise that the Lord's given you. That when you see Jesus face to face, all of this is going to be forgotten. These days are no more. When that day happens, when is that day coming? I don't know. Maybe Sam's on to something. I ought to pack some shorts <laughs> for, for the days ahead. No, not really. Because in our hearts, in our minds, in all of our being, the Lord Jesus has prepared us today for tomorrow, and for his return to know his joy. Oh, brothers and sisters, that's the God we have. That's the Savior who knows us and claims us as his own. That's the one who lives in you and me and walks with us today, tomorrow, and until he returns. Oh, thanks be to God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, 
Thank you for these words of assurance and truth that your son Jesus speaks to us, to me. Today is hard. Tomorrow's going to be maybe even harder. And I long and I wait for your return. But yet you assure each of us, me, Lord, I'm prepared. I'm prepared to face today. And though I don't know what's going on happening tomorrow, I'm prepared for that as well. And I'm prepared to welcome you one day as you welcome me into your eternity. Oh, this is the joy that marks our lives and our living, for which we give you thanks and praise. May that joy abound from us in who we are as your ambassadors to the world with the hope of salvation that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. May, my brothers and sisters, the peace of God that passes our understanding keep our hearts and minds in the peace of the Lord Jesus. As you know, he's prepared you in his eternity. Ah, thanks be to God. Amen. As we have opportunity to bless the Lord with the first fruits of what he has first given to us, or as John the Apostle said, we simply love because the Lord has first loved us, and our giving, our first fruits, our offerings are all expressions of God's love for us first in Jesus as we love him in the giving of our first fruits, trusting in him, right? That he's going to provide for all that we need, like we know he's done for us in his kingdom. So as you have opportunity to give unto the Lord, may you find great joy, <laughs> and may that joy abound as you give of your first fruits, all the ways that you want to, offering plate in the back, online, electronically, etc. May you know great joy in giving unto the Lord. In our prayers today, we want to join in praying for these praises and thanksgivings, first of all, uh, for our graduates. And, and uh, we have several in our congregation. One that I want to mention particularly is our sister in Christ, Marta. Where's Marta? There she is. Who graduated with a master's degree from Liberty University, summa cum laude. How about that? Congratulations, Marta. Yep, you take the next step in your journey of serving uh, the Lord. Congratulations on all of our graduates. We raise them up, up into the Lord's hands. We give thanks, too, for uh, our Southeastern District Convention that went on this last week. I'll share some more information with you in our, bla uh, in our uh, mission minute in, in, a, in a few moments. Um, we also uh, join today, together today in that, those needs that we raise unto the Lord's hands, again, for the Ukrainians and for our brothers and sisters in Christ there, for our, our Lutheran churches in Ukraine. Uh, we pray for uh, peace to reign in that land, and apparently there's also a coup going on in Russia. Uh, and so we pray that that would all work out in peace so that violence and war might end. We, we pray uh, for the Buffalo, New York victims' families in the violence last night. That, that violence would come to an end in our country, in, in the world, even though we know we're going to have difficult times. We join in praying for Carly and Daniel, who were married yesterday. Uh, in that joy of, of their new life as husband and wife. We pray for the family of John. John's going to be uh, uh, buried on Tuesday. His, his life in the Lord will be celebrated at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning. You're all invited to come and uh, celebrate the work of the Lord in his life on Tuesday at, at 10 a.m. Well, we pray with, uh, with and for Bill and Judy as they work through some life transitions because of Bill's health. It seems that he won't be coming home anymore, but he will, will be living uh, in a nursing home. And as Judy fell and broke her wrist, we pray for healing for her as well. We continue our prayers for the family of Marion, whose nephew Jacob uh, is recovering after his car was struck by a dump truck uh, in Texas. As he's being uh, annoying recovery, we pray for that. Uh, we continue to pray with our sister in Christ, Wanda, as she recovers from internal pain, waiting for uh, a doctor's appointment and assessment. We join with our brother and sister in Christ, uh, Hans and Linda, as Linda fell this last week. We are thankful that there wasn't a serious injury, but there was an injury to her hip. She sprained her hip and is, uh, is recovering from that now. But we pray for uh, Linda's continued full recovery. For Pastor John Kasuf and his wife, Fran, as John continues to recover from stage four uh, prostate cancer and pray for the blessing uh, in, his, in his life. Let's pray for the whole people of God and and all people then according to their needs. Friends, won't you come and rise with me as we stand in honor and presence to the Lord, joining our prayers, our hearts together. Oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus that you've given to us to claim a place in your kingdom by grace through faith in him, to speak in his name, 
the cries of our hearts, while this one voice speaks on our behalf, we thank you, Father, for hearing each of us as your sons and daughters. We ask you now, O Lord, to hear these prayers, prayers of, of praise and thanksgiving as we, we join with our graduates, like, like Marta, uh, like our preschool graduates, these little pe purple pieces of tape at the front of the, the chancel here are, are marking their spots where, they're, where they will stand uh, in a week to, to graduate. We thank you, Father, for the blessing of uh, something accomplished and now for your hand to lead and guide them in the next steps uh, as you use them for your glory. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank and praise you for um, the blessing of being together as a district in convention this last week. We praise you for your protecting hand and for the hand of blessing that was over us to celebrate uh, who we are as your people, that, that we celebrate doing together what we could never do alone, but together to, to do great things for your holy name, your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for uh, our outgoing Southeastern District President John and his wife Connie, and pray for our, our new President-elect Bill and his wife Gail as they transition into new responsibilities. Father, we praise you for all who are joining us on social media and, and uh, part of our, our fellowship. Uh, they're with us, maybe not in person here, but they're with us in the spirit and in the, the joy of your good news. And where we find these brothers and sisters all over the world, we declare in your holy name that we are one in you for your purposes. Bless and, and lead us and continue to guide us together as your people, Lord. For the ministry, the, the mission of of your presence among us, sharing the life and love of Jesus Christ with all. Father, today we pray in our, our gathering ministries. Those ministries we find ourselves gathering in worship and fellowship and the, the facilities, the places that those, those, this gathering takes place. Today we pray for our property management ministry and its, its uh, champion, Dick. Father, we thank you for his tireless service to us in this building and and taking care so that we might have a place to worship you that is well maintained and serviceable for us. For a school to be able to meet every day to lead little hands to Jesus. We give you thanks. And Father of our, of our school and for this ministry of our early childhood education center. We pray today for our director, Jamie, and her administrative assistant, Beth. Thank you for their servant hearts, O oh Lord. For the way in which they care for your kingdom in our school, our preschool, those families and children. As they lead now, let them find great joy and give them wisdom as they work through the hurdles uh, as, as leaders, uh, champions of this ministry. Thank you, Father, for the blessing that they are to, to your kingdom, to us, to our school. Today, Heavenly Father, we pray for also the families of our fellowship, giving you thanks and praise for that which we know together in you. We pray for Marilyn, for Dave and, and Marty, for Mike and Pam, for Rachel, for Dan and Elizabeth. Lord, thank you that we continue to enjoy each other's fellowship in your company. Praise to you for these marriages and individuals and bless them mightily. Father, we raise our hearts to you this day in, in these days of, of grief. You told us we would know grief in these days. Grief of, of all kinds. And we see the grief that's expressed among us so readily like a war in Ukraine, death, suffering of our Christian brothers and sisters, our Lutheran churches being destroyed. Father, we pray for them and for all people there in Ukraine. Thank you for those who have chosen to stay and are, are helping aid those who need it. Find in us also, Lord, generous servants of caring for those in need. Father, we pray for the victims of last night's shooting in a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. Father, we pray for all the victims' families in their time of grief. Father, we we lament in, in these days of violence that are, are tearing our, our, our country apart, the world, it seems. We ask for you to put an end to that because we know that you can. But you also, we also know, Lord, that you've prepared us to face days of grief. So we lift these days in prayer to you as one of the tools you've given to us. And, and we live in faith and encouragement to others when they need it. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you for the joy of joining Carly and Daniel together last, uh, yesterday evening as husband and wife in marriage. Bless their, their marriage, bless their family, we pray, O oh Lord. Let that be a joyful time of celebration together in days ahead. Thank you, Father, for the life of John among us as a faithful servant in your kingdom. Thank you for ultimately now healing him as he lives in your presence. We celebrate your work of your grace in his life on Tuesday morning and lay him to rest then until you return. Be with his family, comfort them, and may they know your peace. 
Father, we pray for Bill and Judy as they work through these difficult times of transition, Bill's health, Judy's healing, time apart from one another now in these days. Bless them. Give them peace. And let us, Father, let us also know how we can help them and reach out to them and care for them. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to, to love them. Father, we pray for Jacob, Marion's nephew, as he continues his recovery and healing process. Thank you for sparing his life and bringing him to full health. Father, we continue to pray with Elizabeth, also her oldest sister who lives in India, who is recovering from a broken femur. Bless, we pray, as her recovery goes well. Thank you for protecting Linda from the a, from a, a consequences of a fall this last week. That could have been a lot worse, Lord. But we thank you for the healing that she's already knowing now. Be with Hans as he cares for Linda and, and give Linda peace in this, uh, patience in this time of recovery. We join with Ron, Wanda in praying for her continued recovery from internal pain and, and giving the, the doctors wisdom, Lord, in how to treat her and, and find the way that best uh, cares for her needs there. Thank you, Father. We pray for Pastor John and his wife, Fran, as, they, uh, as he recovers, uh, continuing his recovery from pro, uh, prostate cancer, Lord, and bless them with your peace. Uh, give them that joy of knowing life in your kingdom is ultimately where we're headed. Uh, and, and thank you, Father, for being able to care for them in this way. Father, we pray for all of those among us in their ongoing health needs, like Laura, the daughter of Hans and Linda, and Veronica, the niece of Pat, for Rachel and, and Brenda. For those who are shut in among us, uh, like Hal and Steve and, and Mona, Lorraine and, and, and Bill, bless them, O oh Lord, and let them know of your, your grace and goodness in their lives and our love and care for them as well. For our own military men and women, Heavenly Father, we thank you that Fishburn Military School is accomplishing and finishing up another successful school year. Bless those cadets, Lord, as they go out now and graduate uh, into the world uh, with uh, young, young cadets, young men, uh, some of them going into serving our country as military men. For our own brother, Ron, as he finishes his deployment in Germany and looks forward to returning home soon. Bless, we pray. And Father, we pray for all of our veterans and their spouses, especially those spouses who are alone because of the death of a veteran in the service of our country. Bless them, we pray, all of them, with your peace. Let them know how grateful we are for their service to us. For our emergency personnel, our law enforcement officers, our first responders, we're grateful, Lord, for the way that they give of their time and their lives for our communities. Bless them with great joy in service to us, and may they know how grateful we are for their serving us. For the leaders of our country and for our church, Father, we pray for your wisdom to prevail, your Holy Spirit to lead and guide mightily in your ways of righteousness. And for our own homes, our marriages, our families, Lord, may the heartbeat of Jesus, who has defined and called us by your grace into the kingdom, may that heartbeat beat through all of us as husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, as sons and daughters. And may the neighbors and friends of our communities know we belong to you, and our life is in your kingdom. And may they long for what we have, giving us then the opportunities to share the life and love of Jesus Christ with all. Finally, Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That is, that all people would come to know the saving life of Jesus Christ, including your people, the Israelites, that they might recognize Yeshua HaMashiach has come. His name is Jesus. He is the Christ. He is the Savior of the world and that they might find in him the new covenant of your grace and mercy. As we know it, as we celebrate it, as we proclaim it, Lord, be with us now in our life and living as we call upon you and pray in the way that Jesus himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen, indeed. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, you who are the church, the people of God in the world, may the living Lord, that living word, the Lord God Almighty, may he go with you. He is Jesus. His spirit lives in you. For long ago, at many times, and in many ways, the Lord God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he's spoken to us by his Son. And so, may the God of peace, 
who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. We know him to be our great shepherd. He is the shepherd of we who are his sheep. By his blood of the eternal covenant now, equip you with everything good that you may do his will. All that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ who lives in you, who reigns with the Father and the Spirit, one together in glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In thee is gladness. Let's sing. Let's proclaim that gladness one last time into the, unto the Lord. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah, indeed. Amen. Please be seated, my friends. As uh, we celebrate some announcements among us this morning, some of these things which are defining us as God's people, and of course, that word of truth defines us. Let's say again together our memory verse for the month of May from Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise, indeed, from you, his people. Oh, what great words for us to have in our hearts. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about what's coming up here, and Ruth also will share with us uh, a couple of thoughts. On Sunday, May 29th, that's Memorial Day weekend, on that Sunday, we typically go out to Trinity, our, our, our mother church or the, and the grounds out there, and we celebrate and worship uh, together, and we also have a Memorial Day tribute in the cemetery to those who served our, uh, have served our nation and are buried out there. And then we enjoy a picnic as well, a uh, potluck. So please note on your calendars, 9.30 worship, same as we're doing right now, we'll do out there. Uh, and then uh, that Memorial Day tribute and potluck. We're also going to be having with us a special guest. Do I have it on this next slide? Uh, yeah, I do. As part of our 250th anniversary, one of the five events, that's, this is one of them, that we're going to be welcoming uh, uh, President, he's emeritus now, uh, John Denninger, his wife Connie, to be with us out there in celebrating our, our anniversary, our anniversary year, I should say. And we also hope to have another special surprise lined up. I don't want to tell you right now because we're still in the process of lining, uh, lining that up, uh, but another, another blessing for us to, to share in. 
Now, Ruth, you, you're arranging some uh, days to be out there for preparation, right? So, go ahead, please. Taking a flex. We're going to, on Monday, May the 23rd at 9 o'clock in the morning, um, some of you are already aware of that, that we're going to be out there cleaning rags, index, polish. <laughs> we'll be in, inside the church doing that. Um, the fellows are going to be taking care of the outside work, and um, then on Friday, May 27th at 10 o'clock, um, a number of us We'll be meeting, we appreciate any help, to place the flags at the gravestones um, for all of our veterans. We have 82. 82 veterans, wow. That's a, what, what a great honor to be able to do that for them and then to come together to celebrate. It is, it is. Great, good. Thank you, Ruth. That's Monday, May 23rd, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow for cleaning, and then that Friday, next, that next Friday, for uh, putting up the flag. So if you want to have help, please see Ruth. You can ask her, and she'll get you on that email chain to be a part of that. We also have some preparation for our, 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 vo our new, our new um, fiscal year, which begins September 1st, and our nominating team, which is made up of our vice president of our, of our servant leadership council, Scott, is also now, uh, his response, one of his responsibilities as vice president is to lead the nominating committee, and he's looking for a team of people to put together. Scott, do you want to address some, some things there for preparing for our annual meeting in the new fiscal year? Please. Thanks. Uh, some of you already got emails from me requesting that all be in prayer. The, the, uh, the, our bylaws require that the nominating committee be comprised primarily of <laughs> Thank you, Scott. And it's short term. It's just from now until our, our voters meeting in August. That's all you need to be uh, concerned about concerning time. Okay. Thank you, Scott. I want to share with you today, I'm going to do the presentation, I guess, uh, today for our, our mission minute. And uh, I want to take this opportunity, because we just came off of our Southeastern District Convention, to share some highlights with you, uh, because we're part of the Southeastern District. We're one of the congregations. We're one of the schools. I'm one of the pastors of the Southeastern District. And so to share with you some of the events that went on this last week, it's important for us to be aware. Let me, let me just, uh, I'm going to read this like, uh, uh, so that I don't, I don't miss anything here. All right. The Southeastern District, or you often see it abbreviated SED, of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod was founded in 1939 and our congregation, Bethany, was a founding congregation of the Southeastern District. We are a regional district made up of 250, whoops, I'm sorry, Howard, you, here we go, uh, 215 congregations and 79 schools throughout the states of Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, the District of Columbia, and York County, Pennsylvania. I have no idea why we have one county in Pennsylvania, but that's the geographics that we are. In fact, our district, the Southeastern District, we have the most people in our nation of our population within our district boundaries. 33 million people live within our Southeastern District. That makes us the largest district of having an impact of the kingdom uh, in, uh, in our synod. There are 53,000 baptized members of our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod within these 215 congregations within the Southeastern District. This last week, we held our 39th triannual district conventions. But unlike past conventions, this one was spread over a week with online participation only on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Maybe some of you participated in that. And then there was in-person and live streaming Thursday evening and Friday. I was in Richmond 
uh, Thursday and Friday as the pastoral delegate of our congregation. And Tony, our, our SLC president, served as our congregational delegate. He was there also Thursday and Friday. Now, how the week unfolded was like this. On Monday, President John Denninger of our Southeastern District opened the convention and welcomed all people attending uh, online and in person, who, those who were there at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Springfield, Virginia. After our opening worship, new ministries within our district over the last three years were introduced. And I particularly want to share them with you. And as I share these new ministries that have begun over the last three, I want you to think about how much do these ministries look like us? Us. Here are the new ministries. El Shaddai Evangelical Lutheran Mission, Silver Spring, Maryland. Ethiopian Outreach, Prince of Peace, Springfield, of Virginia. Ecclesia Luterana Nazareth, Baltimore, Maryland. Charlotte, Charlotte Oromo Mission, Prince of Peace, Charlotte, North Carolina. And DMV, not Department of Motor Vehicles, that stands for something else. DMV Evangelical Lutheran Church, Makane Jesus, Washington, D.C. Hmm. And there were the introduction then of two chartered congregations, Zion Praise Tabernacle Lutheran Church in Bowie, Maryland, and New Thing Lutheran Church of Towson, Maryland. Hmm. On Tuesday, floor, that was a highlight, by the way, of Monday, to welcome those new congregations, those new starts, uh, brothers and sisters who probably don't look at all like us at Bethany, but our brothers and sisters in the kingdom. That was a great joy. On Tuesday, floor committees began to meet and work on resolutions that will be introduced for convention later on in the week. The convention reconvened in the evening with the president's report and the presentation of the Servant of Christ Awards and the St. Martin of Tours Awards to deserving servants within the district. The St. Martin of Tours Award goes to those who have served in the military, particularly chaplains, and our, one of our pastors of our circuit, Eric, in Lynchburg, uh, he's, a, he's a retired pastor in, Lin, in Lynchburg, was designated with the St. Uh, Martin Tours Award, and uh, the Sermon of Christ Awards, which were given out, reflect also two of our own members who have received that district's award in our congregational history. Uh, Lewis Coiner was one of them, and Hal Chase was one who had received those Servants of Christ Awards in the past. On Wednesday, another great sending presentation was given by our former pastor, John Diefenthaler. There was also a report made with questions and answers from Synod President Matthew Harrison. And there were two Southeastern District servants recognized, Judy Koki, our archivist for 39 years, and Steve Heeman for his 20 years of service with LCEF. Steve was the one who worked with us in our relocation to secure the loan through, through Lutheran Church Extension Fund so that we can be in our new facility. <clears throat> On Thursday, the convention then met in Richmond. After getting ourselves established with worshipful focus and house cleaning issues, elections began. Pastor Bill Harmon of King of Glory Williamsburg was elected unanimously by acclamation as our new district president. And after a well-deserved expression of thanksgiving for his, and I will say their, service, President, our current president, John Denninger, his wife Connie, were conferred with the status of president emeritus. That's an honor that we give to those who have served in that office and continue then to be active in ministry. And then we continued with elections. Now, let me just pause here for a moment. At the last uh, district convention, I was elected to the nominations uh, committee. So over the last six or nine months, I've been working with a team within our southeastern district to prepare for the elections that took place on Thursday night. So I had quite a bit of, I had quite a bit of activity to do in the convention on Thursday night. And, and, and to my chagrin, I was elected chairman of that of that committee, so I had to be on the microphone, at the microphone quite a bit. It was a great joy and a privilege to serve, but I it, was, it was really, um, I was busy Thursday night, and that was a great, uh, great privilege. Part of that then also was, uh, in, in the election process, several congregations of our district nominated me to serve as the central region of our district, which, um, Howard, go back to the slide of the, of the uh, states there, please. Yeah, so our central region includes the state of Virginia and, and uh, some parts of Maryland. I was, I was nominated to be the, the district vice president 
for our central region. Much to my surprise, the Spirit led the voters to elect me to be the central region's vice president. And then in the ranking of those presidents, I was elected to be the second vice president of the district. So I hold a, a thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I didn't expect it to go that way, but I yield to the spirit and look forward now to some new responsibilities within the, our southeastern district as the Lord has opened those doors. Uh, so anyway, that's where we are uh, with that. We had two more reports, and then uh, we adjourned for the evening. On Friday, we continued working through resolutions that were put up for adoption. We heard reports of our district work in partnership, and we celebrated our life together as his people doing together what we could never do alone. If you want to, Howard, you can go to the next slide, please, then. If you want to, you can find the minutes of each of the days of our convention online at se.lcms.org. That's our Southeastern District website. Okay? So that's our longer than a mission minute <laughs> for today, but I wanted to give you that information. So you're informed. You know of what's going on in our southeastern district and the life that we share together as God's people. So we'll have Bible studies starting in just a few minutes over here, uh, and I look forward to being together with you in the word of the Lord, and our life continues to unfold this coming week. May the Lord bless you and use you mightily. You are prepared for today, for whatever's coming tomorrow, and to welcome Jesus. As we know this truth and it marks our lives, the Lord is risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.